Hi, Tom here again with another video about a camera. This time it's the Ghost, sorry, rather the Drift Ghost X. This is a, a helmet camera, which I use when I'm on my motorcycle. And I've had this now for about 18 months. Uh, and I bought it just because I think it's a good idea for anyone who rides a motorcycle or indeed drives a car to have a dash cam or a helmet cam, just in case they have an accident, they've got proof of, of you know, of who was liable, what happened, all that kind of thing. So. Uh, prior to owning the Ghost, I did actually have a different camera, which is this one here. Um, and this is a very basic, uh, quite a cheap, it's called an Escape HD5. It's basically like a knockoff GoPro, but the battery lasts about 10 minutes. And um, so I would have that either connected to my uh, to my coat jacket or to the, the bike in some way. There's a sort of clip here on the back. But it just wasn't really up to the job because, as I say, the battery would run out after about 10 minutes. So I decided to ditch that and actually spend some actual cash and buy what was being suggested at the time as a good alternative and that was this the the drift ghost x uh, as you can see it's a quite a nicely designed piece of kit and it sits on the side of the helmet quite nicely and i will show you that in a sec but first of all i just wanted to talk about some of the positives to this uh, device um the reason i bought it was because it was a quite cheap and b i like the design of it uh, a lot of these cameras can go up into the hundreds and hundreds of pounds. This was, I think it was about, it was less than 200. Uh, and it offered 1080p recording, which is good enough for uh, evidence in the event of an accident. Plus for like sort of vlogging or uh, just talking while you're, uh, while you're riding. Um, it does have a microphone built into it on the front, which is actually quite useless when you're riding it because of the wind noise that it gets. Um, one of the nice features it does have though is that you can actually rotate the uh, the lens on the top So if you have to put it at an angle on your helmet, you can actually just rotate the lens so it stays level with the road It's got nice big chunky buttons on the top So when you've got a gloved hand you can sort of press the uh, record uh, Or um, the the Wi-Fi button because this does actually have its own Wi-Fi Capability which I'll go into in a sec um, there is a little screen on the back which is actually quite pointless because you can't really use it for anything especially when you're uh, riding but what it does have is a, a light on the front here and it does have the ability to do one press recording so you turn the thing on you hold it down like so and it comes on he says yeah and then what you can do is you just press that button once with a gloved hand and it starts recording which is actually a very nice feature and you can press it again and it stops and then hold it down and it goes off and those beeps are quite audible especially when it's on your helmet right next to your ear and uh, yeah all good and uh, as you would expect now let's talk about some of the positives for us talk about some of the negatives um, positives again just because of the way it's designed it's quite aerodynamic on the side of the helmet I know a lot of people say that these kind of um, cameras that you put on the side of a helmet can have an adverse effect on aerodynamics, but uh, it's quite low profile. It doesn't seem to have much of an effect, not not to me anyway. Other people might have a different uh, experience, but yeah, it's quite uh, it's quite nicely designed and quite sort of thin and aerodynamic, and also has these kind of tapered front end to it, so the wind just kind of goes over it. Um, it's not fully waterproof, but I've ridden with this in the rain multiple times and it's not actually done any damage to it. Uh, these flaps at the bottom are made of rubber and that's where you'll find your USB connector and your uh, micro SD card. Uh, as I say, it does have microphones, one here and one at the rear. Um, but again, those are pretty much useless when you are riding because it's just pure wind noise. What you can get though, however, is a microphone attachment, which is sold separately on the Drift website, or you can get them on Amazon as well. And basically you need to get this uh, sort of adapter. Um, this adapter goes into the USB cable slot on the bottom, like so. And then you've got the, uh, the microphone adapter there. It does look a bit unwieldy when it's actually on the helmet because it's, you know, you've got this, um, things sticking out but on, on the flip side it makes it more apparent that you have actually got a camera on so if anyone's being a bit of an idiot on the road they can see that you've got a camera and um, maybe they'll not be as much of an idiot one would hope uh, but um, the downside to this is that the microphone itself the cable is really long there's no actual like boom arm or anything like that it's literally just a long cable 
that you need to somehow connect either to your jacket or up inside your helmet um, to actually get the benefit of not being just picking up wind noise from that and you can actually talk and record your voice at the same time. It's actually pretty good to be honest. I've used it several times just not to talk to the camera or do a vlog or anything, just basically to have video where the sound isn't just pure wind noise. So the noise from inside the helmet is a lot more subdued and uh, matches the, uh, the high quality video that the camera records. As I said, this does record in 1080p. There is a 4K model, I believe, but it's a, mo it's a lot more expensive than this one. And that one does have extra uh, additional add-ons that you can get, such as a, uh, a touchscreen display that you can get for it. And um, uh, yeah, it, like I say, obviously it records it in 4K, which is a better image quality. But for me, this is, this is just fine. I will cut some footage into this video from the camera. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, operationally it's, it's very straightforward and simple to use. The, the instructions are pretty uh, pretty good. Um, as I say, it does have a Wi-Fi connection, which I'll show you. Okay, so once you've got the once you've got the camera on, if you hold down the uh, the button at the back with the Wi-Fi signal on it, what will happen is uh, this light will come on, and that tells you that the Wi-Fi is being radiated from the camera. And then what you can do is on your mobile phone you've got this uh, thing called the Drift Life app. Sorry, that's really bright. Um, and basically you can connect your camera to the, uh, you can connect to the Wi-Fi. And then what that does is it will actually give you a live feed from the uh, from the camera, as you can see there on the phone. Uh, but what you can also do is you can actually browse your, um, browse your uh, SD card from the camera of the, the, its own Wi-Fi signal. It's a bit slow, it's not the best. Hopefully you can see that. We can basically check out your recordings on your uh, on your phone. I've not I've not used it for a while, so these are quite out of date. These are from back in well, it says 2018, but I didn't own it in 2018, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, yeah, and what you can do is you can set it so that it records in like five minute chunks or ten minute chunks, and then every time it gets to the end of its ten minute recording cycle, it'll just save it to the memory. So then you've got you know, five minute, 10 minute chunks of, uh, of video footage. So that's a, a very interesting and cool feature that you can do with this camera. I'm, I'm sure that there are other cameras on the market that uh, will allow you to do the same thing. So um, let me just turn that app off. And uh, yeah, it's quite simple to use. So because it's in uh, the Wi-Fi mode now, the, the light's gone purple, as you can see there. But what you, you can do is if you hold that down, the little LED on the back will flash and that will tell you that the um, the Wi-Fi is being turned off. And if you hold the power down, you get the three beeps, and then off it goes. So yeah, you know, it's it's very simple to operate, it's very user-friendly, and uh, it does basically what it says on the tin. Now, I'm gonna talk about some of the negative aspects of this camera, because believe it or not, there are some, and uh, they are quite annoying. So uh, give me a sec, and I will show you those. Okay, the, the major issue that I've had with this camera is the, the battery life. Now it is supplied with a battery, and this is a 500 milliamp hour battery made by Drift. And they say that you can use this um, for you know several hours worth of recording. Um, I found that even though this was brand new when I bought it, the, the camera would last maybe 45 minutes on a full charge. And that's like fully charging it overnight. Um, I thought there was something wrong with it. But um, apparently I'm not alone in this. Um, and the battery life is pretty abysmal with the uh, the standard standard battery. As you can see, it's quite a thin thing. It's quite sort of small and light. So that's um, slightly forgivable, but they should really be honest with how long it's gonna last for, because it doesn't last very long at all. You'd be riding along and then suddenly you'll realize that the light's gone off on the, on the camera and it's no longer recording because the battery's run out. So, one of the best things to purchase is this, which is the extended long life battery. Uh, it's not that much more expensive than, you know, I think it was about 25 pounds or something. Uh, but to be honest, you actually need one of these. If you're gonna do some long rides, you definitely need one of these. The, the bonus that this offers is obviously, apart from the extended life, you've got a 1500 milliamp hour 
uh, battery power in this one. But you actually have some extra features as well. So I don't know if you can see that, but you get these LEDs on the side and they basically tell you how much charge is in the, in the camera. Uh, so when you plug it in and charge it, it lights up to tell you how, how charged it is. And obviously once it's depleted, it will also tell you how little charge there is in it when you power the, the camera on as well. As well as that, you get this uh, quite handy charging cable. It's a bespoke kind of um, uh, proprietary connector for the camera battery. So it just kind of slots on like that. And then you can plug that into any USB plug. Um, but you don't get one of these as standard with the camera. Basically to charge it normally, you need to use the USB connector under this flap. So if you buy the long life battery, you actually get this nice extra sort of charging cradle thing almost. Uh, so that's that's one negative that I've had with the, the camera. It's a positive now because I've got this one, but as well as that, th there have been times where I've, I've, I've had the, the thing fully charged and you put it onto the camera and the camera just will not respond. It won't turn on. It's as if the battery's flat, even though you've had it on charge for like an entire day, for example. And I have looked on the, online, I've looked on forums and I believe it's, if the, if the camera has corrupted the memory card somehow, it won't power on. So you, if you take the memory card out, it'll power on fine, but then you put the memory card back in and it'll go off or it'll freeze. And then you've got to use the reset, little reset button, which is next to the, uh, the, uh, the, the memory card slot. And it's just, it, it seems to be quite a common, a common occurrence, occurrence even, that that happens with this, um, this camera. And it can be very frustrating when you think that you're just about to nip out on your bike. Well, obviously not at the moment because we're in lockdown. But if you're on, if you're just about to nip out on the bike, you grab your helmet, put it on, press the on button, and nothing happens. It's just like the thing's fully charged. Why is it not working? And that happens, I would say maybe one in three times. So you take the battery off, you plug it in, you see that it's fully charged, you put it back in again, you spend 10 minutes messing about trying to get the thing to work, and then eventually it'll just suddenly spring into life, and it's just like, well, why wasn't it doing that in the first place? Um, so it can be very annoying uh, getting it to actually come on and work. But when it is working, it's fine. But when it's not, it's super annoying because you can't actually tell what has happened or what's gone wrong. Uh, let me just put that back in. So that's... The it, that's what it looks like with the uh, with the big battery on. Not as sleek and aerodynamic as it would be with the uh, the standard battery, but there it is. Right, I'm just going to show you what it looks like on the helmet now. One second. Okay, so this is uh, one of my helmets. This is the one I use. Well, this is the one I use the most, to be honest, just because I like the way that it's a flip front. It's a Kberg Droid. It's quite a, an inexpensive. Uh, helmet but it's it's very very good quality and uh, I just like it so that I use it the most um, so I've put the uh, you get a selection of these fittings for different helmets you can actually buy accessory packs on the internet and just so you can have multiple fittings on different helmets uh, as I have and uh, yeah you can sp spin that sort of fitting thing around on the back and then just kind of slot it in like so make sure it clicks into place like that, and it's pretty secure then. So there you go, it's on the side of the helmet, easy to access with your uh, gloved hand. And yeah, as you can see, I'll just close the, the lid on the camera, like on the uh, helmet so you can see it. So yeah, it, I mean, it, it does stick out a little bit, but um, not so much that it's gonna cause you any problems. But I, I mean, I quite like the fact that it's visible, especially when the light's on. You can, you can have it so the lights don't light up, uh, but I like to keep them on simply because it shows other road users that you have got a camera on and that you are recording. And there have been multiple times where that's been a lifesaver for me, especially when people are either tailgating or just generally being a dick. Um, so that's quite useful. So, yeah, the, uh, the Drift Ghost X is quite an old camera now. It's not new by any means. Uh, there are newer ones on the market, but um, it does a job. And they're quite affordable now, so if you are in the market for one of these helmet cameras I would certainly give uh, give this one a look but just remember that you kind of need that extended battery if you are if you're going to use one of these regularly okay uh, I'm gonna, at the end of this I'm going to put a little bit of footage from uh, way back when probably last year at some point before lockdown so don't complain at me that I'm riding my bike in lockdown this is ancient footage so um yeah thanks for watching